The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome to the online worship service of Blacksburg Presbyterian Church. Preaching during the summer in year A of the lectionary cycle is a special pleasure because this is the time when we get all those wonderful Old Testament stories from Genesis and Exodus. Because of vacation and the rescheduling of the Seasons of Creation series, we have missed roughly half of those stories, but we pick up today in the Joseph Saga. This Sunday and next Sunday, we will be hearing the stories about the life of the patriarch Joseph. Before we proceed to our worship service today, though, I have a special long-anticipated announcement to make. The session is calling a congregational meeting for August 23rd for the purpose of hearing the pastoral nominating committee present the name of the new pastor for election as pastor of Blacksburg Presbyterian Church. We will be back in touch with you about the mechanics for doing this online. It will involve an expanded Zoom meeting, which we have not done before, but we trust that it will work and that we will be ready for it. This announcement will be repeated and you will hear more about this exciting news in the weeks to come. And now as we proceed to our worship, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. call ourselves to worship. Here in this place, God welcomes the dreamers as well as the doubters. Here the warriors and the wanderers can call on God by name. Here are gathered, gathered those daring enough to step out into the unknown. Here in this faith space, we find the courage to cry out, God save us. Oh 
let us pray. Here in this time, O Lord, we remember all the ways you have graced us. Here in this moment, we are reminded you are with us always. Here we dream of feeding the hungry. Here we seek to release the prisoners. As you invite us to hope for peace and joy. Amen. Too often when life threatens, we trust the world to save us. But, but our God offers forgiveness and healing if we, we would but trust, trust and follow. follow. Let us begin by confessing our sins together. Gracious Lord, it seems so easy to have our dreams, but we are insensitive to the ways we squash the dreams of others. When, when we hear sin, we are too prideful to think the word may apply to us. Help us to reach out to you in humility, so that we may be lifted from despair to hope, from worry to trust, from foolishness to faithful living. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. In confessing that Christ is Lord, we step out of our fears and into the light of the hope offered by our God. In trusting the Spirit to work in and through us, we are healed, made whole, and forgiven. Good morning, everyone. Peace be with you. And also with you. Today's scripture lesson comes from Genesis 37, and it's the story of a young man named Joseph. Now, Joseph was famous because he had 11 brothers and one sister, but of all of the children, his father Jacob loved him the most, and he gave him a coat of many colors. So today, Cole and Airly are helping me out because they put on their coats of many colors for you all to enjoy. And I'm going to read to you a book that I found in our church library called Joseph and His Brothers. There was once an old man called Jacob. He had several wives and a great many children. He had 12 sons and one daughter. Of all his sons, he loved Joseph the most. Jacob made Joseph a lovely coat of many colors. He did not give anything to the other children. This made them angry. One day, Joseph said to his brothers, I had a wonderful dream last night. I dreamed that we were all out in the fields. We were binding wheat into sheaves. Mine was the biggest. All of your little sheaves came and bowed down to mine. The brothers were furious. Just because you're our father's favorite, they said, you think you can lord it over us, don't you? Well, he didn't learn a lesson because the next day, Joseph told them another dream. I was sailing along in the sky and the sun and the moon and 11 stars bowed down to me. Now the brothers really hated Joseph. They agreed they would kill him if they could get him alone, away from his home. Sometime later, the brothers were out in the country. They were looking after their father's sheep and goats. Jacob said to Joseph, go out into the country and find your brothers. Then come back here 
and tell me how they're getting along. When the brothers saw Joseph coming across the fields, they said to each other, look, here comes the great dreamer. This is our chance to get rid of him. Let's just kill him and throw his body into that pit. But the eldest brother, Reuben, didn't agree. He said, don't kill him. Just throw him into that pit. He thought that he would come back later alone and rescue Joseph. When Joseph reached his brothers, they took off his coat of many colors and they threw him down into the pit. Reuben was miserable and he went away on his own. The other brothers sat down to have a meal. While they were eating, they saw a crowd of merchants coming along the road. They had camels loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, which they were going to sell in Egypt. Then Judah said, I have an idea. Instead of killing Joseph, why don't we sell him? So they hauled Joseph up out of the pit and they sold him for 20 pieces of silver. After the merchants had taken him away, Reuben came back. He looked down into the pit. Joseph wasn't there. Reuben thought the older brothers had killed him. He was very upset and he said, what am I gonna tell father, our father Jacob? Then the brothers killed a goat and they put some blood on Joseph's coat of many colors. They took it back to their father and said, we found this coat with blood on it out in the wild lands. It looks like that coat that you gave Joseph. Jacob saw that it was Joseph's coat and he believed that Joseph was dead. He said, an evil beast must have eaten him up. I shall never see him again. And Jacob wept for his favorite son. No one could comfort him. Jacob didn't know that Joseph was alive in Egypt and that one day, he would see him again. And here's what he looked like in Egypt. He had a whole different haircut and different types of clothes to wear. And you will have to stay tuned for next week because there's more to this story and you will find out what really happened to Joseph and his brothers. In preparation for hearing God's word read and proclaimed, let us pray. As we hear your word, Lord, open our imaginations. That, that we, we might have, have dreams of health and wholeness, wholeness peace and justice, and learn to, to live in them. them. Amen. Our reading today is taken from the 37th chapter of Genesis, verses 2 through 11. Listen for what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. This is the story of the family of Jacob. 
Joseph, being seventeen years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he had made them him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Once Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. They said to them, Listen to this dream that I dreamed. Then there we were, binding sheaves in the field. Suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright. Then your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brothers said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. He had another dream and told it to his brothers, saying, Look, I have had another dream. The sun, the moon, and eleven stars were bowing down to me. But when he told it to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, What kind of dream is this that you have had? Shall we indeed come, I and your mother and your brothers, and bow to the ground before you? So his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our second scripture reading continues with excerpts from the 37th chapter of the book of Genesis. Hear the word of God. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him in one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore. And they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty, there was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, with their camels carrying gum, balm, and rosin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, what profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Really? They threw Joseph in a pit and then sold him to the Ishmaelites and carried him off to Egypt. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Really? Okay, I know that's just what we automatically say in response to the scripture reading. But in this case, are you and I simply being liturgically correct? Or are we saying thanks be to God because maybe Joseph got what was coming to him for being such an insensitive jerk? Or when we say thanks be to God for a passage such as this, do we say it in hopes that even in the darkest of biblical stories, there may be some redeeming feature? 
Like that old story of Joseph's father Jacob, a.k.a. Israel, wrestling with the angel of the Lord in hopes of extracting a blessing, perhaps some of us are hoping to wrest something positive from this ancient account, unpromising though it may seem. More on that later. But first, let's take a look at Joseph as young jerk. Because Joseph does annoy his older brothers by tattling on them to their father. Not to mention having the poor taste to recite those dreams in which they are bowing down to him. But face it, no one becomes that way unaided. Any offense Joseph may cause to his brothers receives a big clueless assist from his doting father. You see, Joseph is the firstborn son to Jacob by his true love, Rachel. Those older brothers are sons either of Rachel's older sister, Leah, whom Jacob was tricked into marrying first, or of various concubines provided by his father-in-law to assuage Jacob's anger while he worked another seven years to earn Rachel's hand in marriage. So Jacob, the supposedly clever wheeler dealer, who has finagled his way to prosperity through less than honorable means. This same Jacob turns out to be pretty much of an airhead when it comes to dealing with his sons. Sure, there's that one time in the story you just heard where even he pushes back some when Joseph keeps yammering about his dreams of reigning over his brothers. But for the most part, he unwittingly makes it absolutely clear to the older boys that Joseph is the apple of his eye. Ever been made to feel like chopped liver in comparison to someone else? As if your story has been usurped by someone else's story? Not only does Jacob keep sending Joseph to report on his older brothers, but he pampers him with that famous coat now, in case you haven't heard, I'm sorry to break it to you, that coat of many colors, the amazing Technicolor dream coat, turns out to be a mistranslation. It is actually better translated as a robe with long sleeves. Now that may not sound nearly as dramatic, but it actually explains a lot. Because the robe with long sleeves is a sign of authority. When the older sons are out there laboring in their father's fields in that Middle Eastern climate, a person wearing such a garment is not there to be doing any of the work. No, only the one standing it around lording it over the others is the one in the robe with long sleeves. Hmm. So between Joseph and his doting father, the older brothers have seen enough. And thus they hatch their evil plot to take this dreamer and his annoying dreams out of the picture. Thus Joseph ends up first at the bottom of the pit and then sold into slavery. Granted, what they come up with is way over the top compared to what you or I may have done to keep bothersome younger siblings in their place. But apparently the pain of being overlooked for a younger brother who would have been below you in the pecking order is just too much to take. So when I submitted this sermon, or subtitled this sermon, The View from the Bottom of the Pit, my intent was simply to explore how scared and confused Joseph must have been down there, and how that might connect with what some of you may be feeling about now as we approach the five-month point of having the rug pulled out from under us by this thing called COVID-19. What do you do when something you never saw coming upends your entire life? And I'm speaking here not just of each of us, but of our networks of church and community and nation. In Joseph's case, he had those strange dreams and whatever they signified, the door had suddenly slammed shut on them. What does a 
would mean when a wall goes up where just a, mo a few moments earlier you had seen an open future. Are you just unlucky? Or are you perhaps being punished for something? Do you suppose the view from the bottom of the pit suddenly gives Joseph any more insight into his own behavior? Or is he stunned and clueless? It has been said that a crisis brings out the best and the worst in us. What will become of the young man as he is dragged up out of the pit and sold into slavery? Will he become a basket of self-pity? Or will he adopt creatively? And in the meantime, what of his jealous brothers? After all, the term jealous may be prejudicial. While the solution may have been overly harsh, it's not as if their evil was unprovoked. They too have been looking up from the bottom of their own pits. Pits of resentment, of anger. That's why recent events in our 21st century world have caused me to broaden the view from the bottom of the pit, well beyond the young man in this ancient story. What if many or most of us are suddenly looking up from the bottom of the pit in one way or another. Not only those who have lost jobs through no fault of their own and may now be losing houses and apartments and food to eat. Others have seen educations put on hold or careers derailed or have had to watch loved ones die alone because they had to be kept in medical isolation. And the result is that in very short order, most of us, like Joseph's brothers, may feel justified in operating out of a sense of grievance. Grievance at the acts of others, or perhaps resentment at something called fate or God. To borrow from the title of a popular business book from a decade ago, we seem to be collectively suffering from a case of who moved my cheese? The perception that someone else is messing with the way the world is supposed to be. Which raises a curious thing about this ancient story from Genesis. Did you notice that there is no mention of God at all? The hand of the Lord is clearly visible at many points earlier in this saga. And we will see it at work next week in the conclusion of Joseph's story. But for now, the narrator doesn't even pass judgment as to who is to be blamed. In fact, doesn't even draw any moral conclusions. You and I may recoil at what has happened to Joseph, but it is recounted dispassionately. In today's story, we are not absolved from the question of human responsibility for events and decisions that overtake us. So here are some questions this story asks of you and me. First, do the older brothers really want to spend the rest of their lives that way? Or have they fallen captive to grievance and resentment? Second, having seen where the despairs and fears of the older brothers led them, where then should we turn with the things that cause us offense? Third, will Joseph find a way to land on his feet or spiral downward? And what will become of his dreams? And finally, as was the case with Joseph and his family, what happens when God's timetable does not fit our impatience? Next week we come to a clearer place in the saga of Joseph and his brothers. In the meantime, let's allow those questions to marinate. For now, remember the words of today's call to worship. Here in this space, God welcomes the dreamers as well as the doubters. Here the warriors and wanderers can call on God by name. Who knows? We may even find ourselves able to say of this ominous story from Genesis, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
my very soul. My fortress be protecting me against angry seas of force control. Lord, dwell within my soul. of thy giving love to thus impart. Lord, dwell within my heart and guide my steps, direct my ways to strengthen those whose paths from the astray uncertain world that has been visited upon each of us. Go holding fast the dreams that God has placed in your heart. Go knowing that the creator of dreams, the redeemer of dreams, and the sustainer of dreams walks with you. Amen. <laughs>